Richie Golf Sticks, it's time to hit the fairway. A few weeks ago, I was walking across a golf course in Cornwall and I thought, hmm, you know what? On Chinivision, we've covered leaderboard and we've covered sensible golf, but I've never really done any more golf games apart from that because people think of them as being these boring things where nothing really happens and yet you've got arcade golf games that are completely different and play well like an arcade game so here we are with six eight-bit golf games that aren't leaderboard konami is always a seal of quality especially on the msx so here's a good place to start konami's golf a 1985 game and it comes on cartridge and here we are. You start off with a female player, which is fantastic. You don't often see that. And you get the course on the right-hand side there in the play area on the left. You hit the ball. Lovely stylized graphics with those kind of coloured hills in the background there. Perspective is completely out, but let's not worry about that. But it's drawing the map correctly. And you aim using the map on the right-hand side. Some golf games will be very slow moving and difficult to play, but Konami's Golf is an arcade golf game. And here we are at the hole and the view changes and the little arrows indicate where the ball is to go. Here's the Amstrad version by Choice Software published by Ocean, aka Imagine. Uh, only came out on the Spectrum and Amstrad on the UK home systems, no C64 version. And in mode one on the Amstrad, so four colors. But it, it's here. I mean, why it doesn't look more like the MSX version, I don't know. If you hadn't guessed from that specy port on the CPC, the specy version looks very similar and it's a little bit faster and has nice colors down the bottom to indicate the range that you're hitting the ball, how hard you're going to hit the ball which the MSX doesn't do. That's my one criticism of the MSX. The colouring down the bottom is always yellow. There's not even any red to tell you where the peak of the power is. But the game shouldn't be confused with Ultra Golf on the Game Boy. And Crash gave this 58% and your Sinclair 7 out of 10. Amstrad Action 52%. I think those guys are all being a little bit harsh because it does have 18 holes. You get to adjust your stance. And you have swing, hook and slice. There's wind. And it also uh, takes into account how the ball is lying. While the Specky and CPC versions are a little bit lacking, especially in the graphical department, I rather like that MSX version of the game. It's 1990 and you only have £2.99 to spend on a golf game. Well, Pro Golf Simulator is where it's at. Only on the Spectrum and Amstrad, no C64 version. And it's a very arcade style game, top down view. Use controls to view force fire exits. Yeah, um, that's not what it means. It means you can scroll around the course and have a look at it. You're not looking for where you escape from where the when the course catches on fire. And you can scroll around the entire map and see where all the holes are and you get this at the start of every hole. So back here, press fire. Select which club you want. Go for three wood. Doesn't tell you the distance and you have to use the little line to aim. Oh, I've sliced it and I've missed it. We shall try again. Tells you what the wind's doing strength and oh no I've hit the ball off the course because when you come to hit the ball the second time the little aiming arrow or line resets to 12 o'clock yeah spectrum version so we're on the putting greens we're going to use a putter get the ball in and when you get close enough it zooms into this view I really get annoyed with that aiming mechanism always resetting 12 o'clock. Why not just leave it where it was? Ow. 
Council of Action reviewed this in October 1990 and gave it 70%. Uh, they seem to quite like it, but uh, yeah, again, it's 2 two ninety nine, so you're getting quite a lot for your money. And there are irritations, as I say, the resetting of the aiming and the fact the music doesn't shut up. This is a game you want to play on a 48k spectrum because this music by, I think it's Lyndon Sharp, uh, gets on your nerves pretty quickly. It's not a game that gets mentioned much in the grand scheme of the Codemasters canon, but it's not too bad at all. Plus, for your 2 dollars you get a course designer. Yes, you can overwrite the existing course, add things in, add water hazards, and all sorts of things, if, if that's how you're minded. I don't know if you can actually save your courses, but it's a nice touch. Over to the Sega Mars system with Golf -a Mania. Golf -a Mania. Why not just make it Golf Mania? Anyway, Golf -a Mania. 1990 game published only in Europe and Brazil by Sega. It's a Mars system exclusive. And you have to select which player you are. And these are players from the year. Well, they, they, they resemble people like Greg Norman, who were players in this era. So get a top-down view. Again, it's one of those games where you think, hmm, I wonder if the sensible golf guys were looking at this. You can scroll around the course before you hit the ball for the first time. And there's a few parameters to set up and the view changes. And you've got this uppy downy thing. Have I got that wrong? And you get digitized speech. Sounds like Daffy Duck, but never mind. But apparently it's a good shot. The game has 18 holes, and you can gain experience by doing well in the game. Uh, the experience you can gain include power, well they are, power, accuracy, and luck. There's also special holes where you can gain experience by doing things like getting a hole in one or the longest drive. Music's a little bit Mars System plinky plonk and repeats very quickly. But I rather like this. It's fun. It just gets a... It has that Konami Golf arcade feel, but just a little bit more... Oh, I've gone over the... over the thing there. It just has a bit more feel of something more substantial. It's moving things on. And I love these... Mars system graphics. I'm a sucker for this kind of thing, as you know. But I think it would look, the game looks really nice. I think I mentioned CMVG gave this 89%, and I wouldn't disagree. So from a game that only came out on the Mars system to a game that only came out on the C64, as far as I'm aware, someone will probably correct me, Hole in One, and published in the UK by Mad Games, aka Mastertronic for 2 dollars And I suspect this game probably came out in the USA under another name. But I've not been able to find any definitive link. I'll probably find it after I've published this video. It borrows heavily from leaderboard. We've got some chunky graphics here. Standing on the fairway and you walk to the tee to hit the ball. And you think, hmm, that animation's nice. And you're going to be seeing a lot of it. You hit the ball. And is it hit the trees? You wait a bit, and you walk back to your golf trolley. Is it a golf trolley? Golf bag? And then rather than walk on, the landscape just morphs around you. It's not too slow. Uh, some reviewers complained about the speed of the drawing, but actually it's not terrible. When anyone who's played leaderboard on the CPC, as I did. So you aim the ball. And off we go again. And it's very, very difficult to aim. That, that's one common complaint with this game. That A, well, firstly, has a lot of the walking back and forth. And B, that the aim is completely out. Sometimes the game, apparently, I've not seen it, but people complain the game pauses as well when the ball is in the air while the game works out what to do next. Uh, Commodore user gave this 3 out of 10. CMVG gave it 8 out of 10. Zap gave it 38%. And Zap also said it was a third-class rip-off of leaderboard. So you've got a mix of scores there. CMVG disagreeing with 
Commodore user and Zap64. It's two ninety nine, and it's not that bad. It it's a pretty good representation of nineteen eighty six of a of a golf course. It's minor nickel stuff when you consider it's a budget game. Well, as I say, aiming the ball is a bit hit and miss. That you will overhit it or it will go off somewhere where you're not intending it. It's not precision. But again, look at this. I love the idea there's water over there. And it looks... You know, the, using the C64 palette nicely. Hit the ball. Where is it going to go? Onto the, onto the green. Is the ball hanging in the air? Was it gone behind the golf flag thing? A bit more drawing this time. I just love the fact it's drawing the landscape. I call it not a game to necessarily play, but an interesting curio just to see how it draws the golf course around you. Back to the MSX. It's Namco, or Namcot, as it is on the title screen here with mini golf and something a little bit more simple. It's a top-down golf game. And look, it's taking all this time to draw that compared to that C64 game. So we select our club. And we hit the ball. And there's no music or much in the way of sound effects. It's very, very basic. It's a 16K ROM. So uh, if you're thinking this was going to suddenly cut to a view of the golf course, you are you are mistaken. Well, apart from when you come to do the putting and there's no hills or anything to worry about. You just hit the ball in the direction. It's very simple. It's almost like an advanced crazy golf game. It looks so basic and there's not a lot to it, but I found myself playing it for a little bit and thinking this is, it's fun. And that's the least you can expect of for a game, game like this. And so many golf games get bogged down in a minutia of drawing the course and being really slow and everything taking forever. And in mini golf, really, you're just knocking a ball around. Jack Nicklaus's greatest 18 holes of major championship golf, allegedly the longest game title ever up until that point. I can't verify that. But we're going to look at this game on the C64. It came out on every system going, the Amstrad, the MSX, the PC, the Macintosh, everything. I think it's NES version, ST. But no, we're going to look at the C64 version. It's a good example of a disc game on the 64 because... Forget this game on tape. And the graphics are really interesting because if you look, it's almost like more modern bitmapped graphics that you saw a few years later in 3D. Some people have complained these graphics are unclear and I can see that. But I find it really interesting. The game is much more like leaderboard. It's a proper golf simulation more than any other game we've seen today. And look at the that the curve on that ball as I hit it as it landed there. And and the yeah, you do have to sit through this drawing the screen, which is a bit like waiting for a tape game to load. But it's not horrifically slow. It, well, depending on how many trees there are on the screen. But you wouldn't have this is the kind of experience PC gamers were getting used to. And to have this on the 64 with its one megahertz processor i think it's very impressive and it's the ball control and the precision of it it's a step up from leaderboard it's as it's more like those pc golf games that you saw and yes there's there's an amstrad version for example where amstrad action really liked it they gave 89 percent and said without shadow of a doubt the best golf game ever on the cpc this moves things up a gear from the leaderboard series and that's so true across so many of these systems that the game came out on. It's the next generation of golf games, even if in some cases the hardware 
isn't quite up to it. It's what we're going to come to expect from our golf games. Incidentally, this C64 version is by Sculptured Software, who I think, didn't they do LA SWAT? So they've suddenly gained a lot of skill over the last few years. No, on the C64 here and on some of these other systems as well, I really do like Jack Nicholas, even if the game title is ridiculously long. And yeah, okay, if you look at this screen now with the lake on the left-hand side, it's all very crude. But this is a C64 doing it. It's a 3D world in a in a kind of bitmapped. Well, it's not bitmapped. Well, it kind of well, you can see what they're trying to do, and there is direct lineage from this to the golf games we were playing in the 90s. As I said, it is it is moving things up a gear from leaderboard. You can check this game out on so many different systems, from just from a technical perspective, on a C64 disc system. I'm really impressed. So that's six 8-bit golf games and a huge variation from mini golf, which is the simplest golf game you can possibly imagine, right up to Jack Nicholas. Konami Golf, well, at full price on the Spectrum and Amstrad, mm, but on a Hit Squad re release, I believe it came out on that. Yeah, yeah, it's a decent golf game, decent, uh, decent arcade fun, and the MSX version I really rather like. Pro Golf Sim, no idea whether there's not a C64 version, nothing on the games that weren't. But again, for $2.99 on your Spectrum and Amstrad, it's simple, it has faults, but it's going to amuse you on a wet Saturday afternoon. That's all we can really expect from most original budget games. Golf A Mania, the only thing I don't like about it is the title Golf A Mania. But let's call it Golf Mania. I love the graphics, and it's so evocative, it's the same kind of aesthetic you saw in Sensible Golf, at least in the colours, years later. A game that didn't get much heat at the time, but CMVG gave it 89%. Yeah, completely agree. Hole in one. I really want to like it, but it's just too irritating. It's the walking back and forth and the rubbish controls that ruin it. I can live with the slow draw times. That's fair enough. But what I can't live with is terrible controls the ball not going to the right place. And it's not the player's lack of skill. It is something that people have noted in reviews and Lemon64 reviewers have also noted. I can see why CMVG were impressed and gave it 8 out of 10 because it looks like a, a good value game for 2 99 but it's what Alan Sugar would call a mug's eyeful. Mini Golf from Namco. It's a very simple golf game. You may say, Ginny, why is it in here? And I say, I want to provide a full gamut of games from the simplest to the most complex with Jack Nicholas. It gave me a lot of fun. But the one I really want to point out again is Jack Nicholas on the 64. It's a disc game, it's pushing that system so hard. Some people criticise the graphics on that system. I disagree, I can see what it's trying to do. And it's a great game on so many other systems that just move things further on from leaderboard. Today, for me, the go-to golf game is still always leadable just for that nostalgia value because I can sit back I can play it but out of this lot yeah for me it's Jack Nicholas and it's I'm gonna say it on the 64.